For the past 80 years, if you want to know people's thoughts, if you want to know what they want, what they're going to do, why they do the things they do, you have one main approach. You ask them. You conduct a survey, you do a focus group, uh, and use that data to tell us who people are. And there's a main problem with this approach, which is that people have been shown over and over again to lie to surveys. Uh, they don't tell the truth. They shade things in the direction of things that sound good. Either they're lying deliberately to another person or they may be lying to themselves. If you ask American women uh, how frequently they have sex, this is a general social survey, the biggest survey in the United States, how frequently do they have sex and how frequently do they use a condom? American women over the age of 18 say, say on average they have sex once a week and use a condom 20% of the time. You do the math, this means they're using 1.1 billion condoms every year in heterosexual sexual encounters. Uh, heterosexual men, you do the same uh, thing. They say they have sex 1.5 times a week, use a condom 20% of the time. This adds up to 1.6 billion uh, condoms every year in heterosexual sex. I collected data from Nielsen on how many condoms are sold every year in the United States, and only 600 million condoms, <laughs> condoms are sold. So everybody now is lying about sex and exaggerating. Uh, the only difference is by how much uh, men, men even more than women. We're not in the dark as much as we used to be, which is we now have this remarkable source thanks to the internet. Uh, people tend to be really, really honest in the searches they make. We know the conditions that tend to make people more honest. They tend to be more honest when they're alone. Uh, they tend to be more honest when they're on the internet. And I think more important, the reason that people are so honest in their Google searches is that it gives you an incentive to tell the truth. So you never have an incentive to tell the truth to a survey uh, so people just feel the need, oh, I'll shade it a little bit. But if you need information, you got to tell that to Google. So actually, this is in the United States. Uh, there are more searches for porn than weather in the United States, uh, even though only about 20% of men and 4% of women say they watch porn in surveys. So a very, very different uh, view of people on Google than you'd see in surveys. And I checked in, in Britain, and there are actually more searches for weather, probably because you have worse weather. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's not a blowout. It's close. But, uh, <laughs> Back in 2012, uh, I, st I started discovering Google Trends data, and I was interested in this question of racism in the United States. And if you remember way back when, uh, 2008, uh, when Barack Obama was elected president of the United States, there was this idea that if we could elect a black man in, the, in America, and we could elect him in so by a, a pretty substantial margin, then race couldn't be a huge issue in the United States. People are saying we lived in a post-racial society. That was the idea back then. Did you care that Obama was black when you voted, if you asked that to Americans? Uh, 98, 99% said, no, 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 of course not. And maybe the one or 2% didn't understand the question or just trying to get the person off the phone. Like, the Americans just, in, in this day and age, do not say that they, that they care about someone's skin color, that they're racist uh, to a survey. So I looked at, at Google searches back in, in, in 2012, and I said, Can you, what, what, what did this tell us about racism? When people are alone, when people have an incentive to tell the truth, what would this tell us? And the first thing I noted was the shocking degree to which people are making racist searches on Google. The other thing that was, was striking in this data was that the map looked different than I would have guessed. So when we think of the United States, uh, if you know anything about the history of the United States, we usually think of racism as a southern issue. That's what the Civil War in America was fought. But while there are many southern areas that are high in, in racism, there are also many places in the north, in the northeast, in the Midwest, Michigan, and Ohio, and Pennsylvania. We usually think in the United States that racism is uh, predominantly concentrated among the conservative Republican Party, but it's about equally split these racist searches among more liberal Democratic areas and, and conservative Republican areas. So I think it's very, very clear in this data that despite what people were saying, uh, there is a huge racism problem in the United States and it explains a lot of uh, political behaviors. If you read my book, there are a lot of things that aren't so cheery, uh, documenting parts of ourselves that maybe we wouldn't wish we didn't know about. And if all big data did was tell us things about ourselves that maybe are a little uncomfortable, I think that wouldn't be necessarily so valuable. It would be depressing, but it wouldn't be so, so valuable. I think the real power in big data is by knowing these things, we can start to maybe change society, to improve society.